Well, I would hope that my use of ePortfolios has evolved, um, has improved over time. And I think the, the biggest factor has been the ePortfolio boot camp that I attended a couple years ago. Um, prior to that, the ePortfolios had been presented um, sort of as take, an, take any assignment you already have your students do and have them upload it to the ePortfolio in the very early days of ePortfolios when we maybe didn't know exactly what, what we were to be doing with them. So I think that the boot camp and seeing the videos um, that were shown there of the students with their ePortfolios was really helpful in changing my thinking about what an ePortfolio could be. Um, and that then changed my thinking on my ePortfolio signature assignments. I would say first go watch some of the videos that are on the website of students that have won the awards for their ePortfolios to get an idea of really how great um, ePortfolios can be. Uh, I think once faculty become invested in the ePortfolios and in, in the pedagogy, they might uh, become a little more invested in the assignments that they, they create and therefore create some better signature assignments and reflections that go along with it. Well, my signature assignment varies from semester to semester, but the one that I tend to go back to most often is um, a critical reasoning paper on an ethical issue in biological anthropology. So I've built um, into the paper them itself that they write, um, there's reflection in the paper. They have to uh, pick an ethical issue, they have to identify both viewpoints, identify evidence supporting um, both viewpoints, um, scientific evidence, and then they have to reason through which position they hold um, and why they hold it. So the learning outcomes that I really try and focus on would be substantive learning and communication, of course, um, but also that sort of critical thinking pieces they have to reason through. So there's reflection in the assignment itself, um, and then there's also a reflection that goes along with that. And a couple of years ago, I added a, another component to the assignment where they have to do um, some sort of, create some sort of multimedia product um, that advocates for whatever position that they decided to choose after their reasoning. And that has been really interesting. Uh, I've gotten poems, I've gotten cartoons, I've gotten uh, lyrics sung to songs that already exist. I had a student write a completely original song um, and upload it. So it's been really fun to see how students will take that creative component um, on what maybe they thought was a somewhat boring paper, but do something really creative and interesting with it. So I started last semester having a reflection piece on each of the exams that they do. And it has, um, usually it has three separate parts. And the first part is some major issue that is, um, or some major topic from that section. So for the first section of the class on the first exam, it's often about genetic testing. Um, for the second part, it might be about primate conservation. Um, so something that is, is relevant to that particular topic. And then uh, part of the prompt, the first part is they have to sort of discuss the issue from a biological anthropology standpoint. So how would you explain this topic to other students? Uh, race would be a good example. That's one I've done in the past. So how would you explain uh, the concept of race to another biological anthropology student? And then um, there's a couple of follow-up prompts that ask them to, how would they explain the same topic in different contexts. So how would you explain it to a religious studies class? How would you explain this to a psychology class? How might you explain this to your family around the Thanksgiving dinner table? So they think about the topic and the knowledge they know about the topic, but in different contexts, and then communicate it to different audiences. So I think that that helps them understand the topic uh, much, much better if you have to, you know, it's one thing to be able to write down the facts, but how do you explain it in um, to these different audiences. I think anytime you can get students to thinking to think about something in a different way, it enhances their learning. So it's it's one thing to to do the structure of the paper and you gather your evidence and you write through it, but then to have to really think of a creative way um, about that issue and about your thinking on that issue, I think really has them delve into the issue a little more deeply than just a paper might. And I have my students go and watch some of the videos um, of the student presenting online so that they can get an idea of how, how what their ePortfolio could be, that it's not necessarily just you know, a file dump. Oh, I have to do this for the class, so I'm just going to go throw these files up and be done with it. Uh, that if they, you know, if they're going to get out of the ePortfolio, what they put into the ePortfolio. 
I say the very beginning of class that what I most want them to learn is how to think um, and how to think like a scientist. So I hope that through um, the various reflection prompts and the signature assignment and the use of the scientific method um, that they learn how to evaluate information that they might come across in their everyday life.